the evening. If you're enjoying tonight's show and you want to learn more about our monthly events, or if you'd like to make a donation to Theatre 3, you can visit our website, as you see here, at www.theatre3.org. We would greatly appreciate any support that you can offer our group at this time, as knowing the conditions that everybody is going through, we also are trying to cover as much as we can to stay active in the community for all of you to enjoy. Thank you. For our next reader, Pam Policastri joined Theatre 3 for Brigadoon in 2012 and fell in love with the people who make up this wonderful troupe. She since moved to Seattle. Yeah, that shows you how much she loves the group. Not kidding. <laughs> but through the magic of Zoom, she gets to rejoin her talented friends tonight. Pam is a senior recruiter at Expedia Group and directs their a cappella group, where they dress like tacky tourists and sing songs about travel. She can't wait to travel again and see her Theater 3 friends in person. Tonight, she's reading. Escaping the House of Demons. Escaping the House of Demons. After my divorce, I was at an all time low and desperately feeling the need for solitude and reflection. Not having the accessible funds for a getaway, I uh, had a work friend graciously offer her stone cottage in the woods. Being a two hour drive away, it was a welcome retreat and I thanked her profusely for the opportunity to escape. Before I left, she dropped by to give me the keys. I was surprised to see her quite nervous as she handed them over. I asked her if she was okay and she turned around before getting in her car and uh, pursed her lips like she was conflicted. I should have told you before, but we haven't been there for three years. You might have to clean it up a bit. I laughed and shook my head at her. That's no big deal, don't worry about that, I said. She continued to stare at me. There's something else. She closed the car door and came closer to me. Some say that it's haunted. I laughed heartily at the absurd statement. Come on, you know I don't believe in that stuff. I'll be fine. I ignored the fact that she was shaking in fear. After a hug, I pondered the fact that my friend was so gullible and surmised that the, the cottage was probably just old. I arrived at the property around 5 p.m. on a Saturday night and had taken a week off to enjoy my welcome holiday. Driving up the dirt road towards the site, I noticed that it was nestled in the trees with a storage shed out the back. I also noticed the strange fog around the property, which had not been anywhere else on my drive up the mountain. I parked in front of the cottage and admired the stonework, which was built with rocks taken from the nearby river. The wooden door and shutters added old world charm and the quaint shingles on the roof completed the look. When I unlocked the front door and opened it wide, I was surprised with how sparse the furniture was. The, the mess that my friend had mentioned was non-existent. Uh, so I dragged my bags in and set up. Happy that my grief over my divorce was suspended. I had a makeshift meal and settled in for the night. It took a while for me to realize that the usual sounds one might expect in the woods were absent from this area. As I lie in bed, wondering why everything was so quiet, I heard soft footsteps coming from the main room. As I lay in bed, I saw dark shadows next, peering under the crack in the door, while the footsteps multiplied and raced faster. I sat up and watched the, the flickering shadows like black fire coming from the other room. The footsteps got louder. Getting out of bed, I took a step toward the door, but stopped when it slowly started opening 
on its own. The creaking of the door almost hurt my eardrums and I shuddered as a cold breeze whipped up around me. Being able to see the whole room, I was puzzled to still hear the footsteps. Then I realized they were coming from the ceiling. Suddenly, unseen hands, more like claws, shoved me forward. I screamed and stumbled into the main room. I quickly spun around, just in time to see the bedroom door slam shut. Then, demonic laughter froze me to the spot. I tried to, tried to get up. I lunged at the front door. I was stopped by a large hand grabbing me by the hair. Ow, then I jerked upwards into the air. Screaming in terror and suspended in midair, my feet scrambled to find footing and my scalp burned with pain. I yelled, let me go as I dangled in the air. I was then thrown viciously across the room. Landing on a chair, I tumbled over it and felt sharp fingers clawing my flesh. The black flickering flames turned out to be demons, which I still can't believe to this day. It's hard for me to call them demons, but I can't think of how else to describe them. They had evil red eyes. I yelled in a rage, what do you want? One of the larger demons flew right up in my face and roared loudly. At first, I didn't understand the words as I was distracted by the stench and the icy cold blasts coming from its mouth. I realized that the cold was actually fire, that it was so hot it became a searing chill straight from hell. I was slammed back down by the powerful claws. I screamed my question again, louder this time. What do you want? I nearly fainted when I heard the response. Slower this time. Blood and soul. Screaming pure terror, I fell back and twisted myself around, then quickly crawled toward the front door. Many claws grabbed at my ankles, but I ignored the scratches and the tearing of my flesh, focused on escaping. The demonic laughter bellowed in my ears and several phrases broke through to my consciousness, like, get her, drink the blood, and Follow the soul, make her one of us. By this time, I thought I was going insane. Miraculously, I was able to open the door and soon was on my feet, racing towards my car, dressed in my nightie. Once I got to the car, I realized that I didn't have the keys. I fell to the ground and turned to look at the cottage, sobbing, and shaking, I saw a tall, terrifying devil, devil man glaring at me with a vicious snarl on his fiery face. For some reason, he wouldn't step over the threshold. So I crept over to the other side of the car and waited. The next thing I knew, it was early the following morning. I was freezing and my teeth were chattering. I slowly stood up and looked over at the cottage. The door was still open, but the demon wasn't there anymore. Even though I was freezing, I crept up the stair steps and peered into the cottage. The furniture was smashed and upended. Keeping my eyes on my purse and suitcase, I ran in as fast as I could and snatched them up and ran for the door. As I approached the threshold, I heard a dark chuckle from somewhere in the cottage as a hand grabbed my hair. Not wanting to do a repeat performance, I surged forward and felt a clump of hair being ripped from my scalp. I ran to the car, threw my bags in, not even bothering to get dressed. I felt a trickle of blood down my neck. It took ages for me to get the car started and I sobbed loudly even though my anger was building to fever pitch. <sighs> when the car finally started, 
I planted my foot on the accelerator and I roared away from the cottage. Reaching around to feel the blood on my neck, I was baffled to find that nothing was there. My scalp was intact. I still have no idea what happened that day, but I'm sure I didn't hallucinate the demons and their terrifying attack. They didn't get my blood or my soul.